Today is February 25th, and you're watching the Park Hopper Daily Weekly Newscast. Why, hello, everyone! My name is Anita Boyer, and I am here. I'm freshly showered. I am so proud of myself. It's been an evening. I've had some stresses, but you know what? The show must go on, and I am so excited to be here with you tonight. We have a lot to celebrate. Um, I hope that some people are able to join me live on Facebook because, as you know, at the end of the... Oh my god, I've just been viciously attacked by my straw. Um, as you know, at the end of the newscast, I love to... Um, hear from you. I love to get your questions. And if you have any questions about anything to do at Disney or um, in the Disney bubble or any of the news that we can cover, please type those little questions in right now because at the end of the show, I am going to answer them for you. All right. Um, well, let's get started, shall we? One of the most iconic Imagineers has found a new gig with none other than Sir Richard Branson. Menus for the Taste of Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival dropped, including some new brunch-inspired dishes. Details have begun to emerge on how to finally get back into Disney's California adventure, praise be! The 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World is coming into focus. And perhaps dreams do come true! A Society of Explorers and Adventure series is in development for Disney Plus? What? Wow. Okay, but before we dive in, let's take a moment to check out my amazing shirt. I'm actually gonna try to like stand up a little bit. If you saw my, my precarious setup, you'd laugh right now. Um, this shirt, it's uh, Walt Disney World Cinderella Castle. At the bottom it says, just a moment. Just a moment. Um, if any of you were anywhere near the um, DisneyWorld.go.com, whatever website, around the time that the Park Pass system initially launched, I believe it was uh, June 22nd or 23rd, somewhere around there, uh, late June of 2020, Walt Disney World launched their Park Pass system and it was officially open to book your Park Passes. Um, we cra we crashed it. And by we, I mean all of the crazy Disney fans who were like, I gotta get in, I gotta get in, I gotta get in. I was one of them. I think I spent about 24 hours just staring at this screen. It was when, uh, when you came in to the, to, uh, try to make your park pass, you got sent to this screen. And I absolutely love the fact that I spent an entire day staring at this screen. And then I went on Instagram and lo and behold, Buena Vista Apparel, Buena Vista Apparel had it already designed, all ready to go um, for a shirt. So the next day I had to buy it. Um, speaking of they, their style, they are like to the second with their merch. Um, I was checking them out uh, yesterday in preparation for today's newscast and they already have a shirt design with Agnes from WandaVision. Um, you know, I was going to say, I was going to say the line, but it, just in case you haven't seen the episode yet, I, I don't want to ruin it, but um, it's hilarious. It's basically the end of the last episode, episode seven. They already have a shirt of it and it's hilarious. So I might have to get another one. Wow. All right. There was a lot of news in the, in the world of Disney this past week. I'm Anita Boyer here with your Park Hopper Daily Weekly Newscast. Disney fans have been waiting with bated breath for the 50th anniversary celebration at Walt Disney World, and this week we learned a little bit more about what the company has in store. The 50th anniversary is officially on October 1st, 2021, and super fans have already ensured that all park passes for the Magic Kingdom are officially sold out for now. But don't fret. As expected, the Walt Disney Company plans to stretch this anniversary out as they usually do, to an 18-month celebration beginning in October, so everyone will have plenty of time to get in on the action. The world's most magical celebration will include the four park icons, Cinderella Castle, Tower of Terror, the Tree of Life, and my personal favorite, Spaceship Earth. <laughs> 
getting, uh, they're gonna get beacons of magic, nighttime lighting, uh, special treatments, and in the case of Spaceship Earth, this will be at least a semi-permanent installation. I usually try not to be one of the many Disney naysayers because if you are in the Facebook realm of, of Disney message groups and, and, and support groups, um, anytime Disney announces any kind of change whatsoever, the immediate reaction is yeah! and everyone freaks out and loses their collective minds and it is, you gotta, you gotta have faith. I mean, the, there's a reason why we love Disney. Disney doesn't typically do wrong by us um, or when they do, they make it right. I mean, that's, that's their whole customer service guest relations game. Um, that being said, I'm a little nervous about Epcot. I really hope that it is not too much of a change because especially these days, something, something iconic like that. We just, we need, we need our beacon. We need our beacon of truth and light and hope. Then anyway. Minnie and Mickey will, of course, be donning special clothing in honor of this momentous occasion in special iridescent color palettes. And I have to say, these outfits certainly outdo the Mickey's 90th birthday celebration attire. Um, but that was a fun, that was fun attire. I actually um, have photos. Joe proposed to me in front of Mickey and Minnie. Uh, I, I don't, should I say this on a, on a Disney thing? But I, I don't love Mickey, Minnie. I, I'm, I think it's because I'm so like a Mickey girl that like Minnie is just kind of superfluous and um, like he's my he's mine. So I, it's more of a jealousy thing, I guess. So maybe I should get over that. But um, they were both there in the crazy confetti outfits. And that's how all of our engagement photos uh, were taken with Mickey and Minnie. And it was so special and so beautiful. Good job, honey. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the Mouse also announced this week that former president of Walt Disney World, George Calgaritis, has been named the global ambassador for the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary celebration. Uh, Calgaritis also serves as the president of segment development and enrichment for Disney parks, experiences, and products. This is not the executive's first time at the helm of a major celebration. He also oversaw the 45th anniversary of Walt Disney World in 2016. I'm sure more details will be forthcoming as we near the fall. Keep checking back to uh, parkhopperdaily.com for the latest. In other news, legendary former Imagineer Joe Rohde announced this week that he has joined the Virgin galactic team, a company founded by Sir Richard Branson to commercialize space travel as an experience architect. I'm going to need to take a sip because I, 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 it just blows my, like, it blows my mind. We, space travel has, has come so far that now it's becoming a, it, we're commercializing it. And, and it's so real that someone that I've actually heard of is, is part of it. Joe Rohde is part of this experience. I mean, maybe they have him in uh, just in case something goes wrong and they need it to look really cool even if it stays grounded. I'm sure he could make an experience so immersive and so realistic with its details that you could feel like you were to Mars and the moon and back without ever having to leave Earth. But we'll see. Rhodey helmed several key expansions at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, including Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom Lodge, and Pandora, the world of Avatar. I mean, if, if those aren't three of the most like immersive experiences. Um, he was also behind the Guardians of the Galaxy update to the Tower of Terror at Disney California Adventure theme park and the Villages Nature Eco Resort near Disneyland Paris. That's quite a resume. <laughs> Rhodey retired from the Walt Disney Company in December, and it was rumored that his exit might not have been entirely voluntary, with projects like the company's newest Disney Cruise Line Private Island still under development, with Rhodey leading the design effort prior to the COVID-19 virus pandemic. This confirms Rhodey was not ready for an official retirement, although perhaps ready to retire from more earthly pursuits. I like, I like that line, Catherine. That was great. Quote, I spent 40 years with Walt Disney Imagineering, and that word Imagineering refers to the fusion of imagination and engineering, said Rhodey in a video recorded at Spaceport America in New Mexico. 
This means I've come from a tradition where if, if you are imagining something, you are imagining that thing is going to be made real. Oh, God. Like even his quotes about stuff just make me feel all of the feels. That's also been going on here at Virgin uh, Galactic, and I'm delighted to be joining at this incredible moment in time when it is about to blossom into public awareness, end quote. For the full video, please visit parkhopperdaily.com. And speaking of great adventures, on Tuesday, The Hollywood Reporter broke the news that Ronald D. Moore is developing a number of projects for Disney Plus set in the theme parks of Walt Disney Company. Uh, the first project, this, this is this is another, like you're gonna need to have like a sip of something nearby. The first project, according to Joe Otterson, will be written and produced by Moore and will be focused on A society of explorers and adventurers! Okay, if you don't know why that is so exciting, please go listen to Lou Mangello's podcasts about this. Um, I will link to them whenever I post uh, these videos. But the uh, Society of Explorers and, Ven and Adventurers, also known as SEA, is a society that has been weaved into parts of Disney theme parks backstories, and, and not just in Florida. No, uh, the Society of Adventurers and Explorers goes as far as Tokyo Disneyland, and it is part of the theming of some of their main attractions and the way that the backstories interweave and intertwine is just so cool! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, getting, I'm really excited about that. The SEA show will take place in an alternate reality where all the themed lands and characters from Disney parks and films reside, otherwise known as my apartment. <laughs> Moore is no stranger to series set in alternative histories, according to Otterson. He also worked for, uh, on the show For All Mankind for Apple and Outlander for Stars, and in the Star Trek universe, creating a reboot of Battlestar Galactica. Well, we know that was one of Dwight Schrute's favorite shows, Bears Beats Battlestar Galactica. The Disneyland Resort will reopen March 18th for a of Disney, a new ticketed event opening in select areas um, of the Disney California Adventure theme park Thursday through Monday from noon to 8 p.m. The introductory ticket price is $75 per person for guests ages three or older, but before you bulk at the price for something to a theme park where rides and attractions are not even going to be open, remember that tickets include parking in the Mickey and Friends structure uh, beginning at 11.30 a.m. and a $25 gift card redeemable for food and non-alcoholic beverages at select dining locations within the Disneyland Resort, as well as unlimited digital downloads of Disney PhotoPass photos captured during your event. That's pretty cool. That 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 is worth $75 in my very humble opinion and the fact that I won't have the opportunity to take advantage of it either way. I still think that it's a great deal. Iconic foods like Dole Whip, a classic Monte Cristo, uh, Monte Crisp, Sandwich and churros will be available, as well at the event, which will have its own curated soundtrack of reimagined Disney songs broadcast throughout the park. I mean, I would literally just go to like sit on a bench on Buena Vista Street and listen to the music and, and take it all in. Table reservation, reservations for alfresco dining at Lamplight Lounge and Carthay Circle Lounge will also be available beginning March 11th. West Coast Disney Vacation Club members rejoice! The Grand California Hotel and Spa will reopen its villas on May 2nd. Terry Schultz, the vice, uh, senior vice president of Disney Vacation Club, Guided Adventures, and Golden Oak announced in an email to DVC members on Tuesday. The resort will only be open to DVC members and their guests and the rest of the hotel, as well as neighboring Disneyland Hotel and Disney's Paradise Pier, as well as the theme parks in Anaheim will remain closed, except for a touch of Disney for now. With the Taste of Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival opening in less than a week on Thursday, the Disney Parks blog dropped all of the festival booth menus and new information about what is one of our favorite events on property. Notably, the event this year will feature local Orlando bands performing as a part of the festival, as well as small business owners. We really, 
really have to give it to Disney on this one for prioritizing local musicians over larger acts, especially now when so many artists are truly struggling as a result of limitations necessary with COVID-19. Bravo, Disney. We are also really excited about two new outdoor kitchens, Epcot Sunshine Griddle, which will have brunch inspired dishes like a particularly beautiful avocado toast, shrimp and grits with brown gravy and sweet corn salsa and fried cinnamon roll dates. I made another sip. I'm so hungry right now. Mm. That kitchen will be found in Future World East. Farmer's Feast will also debut this year, offering a rotating offering of seasonal menu items, including a first menu with dishes like spring onion soup with crispy shallots and micro chive. Yes, please. As usual, the food for this festival is just beautiful and we can't wait to give it a try and give you all the food reviews we can between now and July 5th when the festival will close. For a full list of all the menu items, as well as some tantalizing photos, please visit parkhopperdaily.com. And while you're visiting places on the interwebs, you should hop over to our YouTube account. I mean, unless you're watching this on YouTube, in which case, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, but we just wanted to thank you all so much because this week we passed some major milestones for our brand new and, and burgeoning um, Disney enthusiast site. Um, we passed 100 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you. Even YouTube sent us a little email with some digital confetti. It felt very exciting. Um, and today we woke up to over 7,000 followers on Instagram. And seriously, thank you so much. Um, we are trying to shout out some of the small shops. I've been doing that, uh, supporting small shops at the beginning of the news, um, tagging them in our stories. And we've been trying to be more engaging and fun and give people what they want and what they're looking for, answer all of your questions, give you some magical meme Monday with some silly Disney fun um, on Mondays, Trash Can Tuesdays, Where in the World, Wrong Answers Only. If you weren't following us yesterday, I actually made yesterday's Where in the World Wednesday a highlight on Instagram because I was crying. I was laughing so hard. So Joe made, I, the, the Where in the World was a photo of Joe. He was actually in Hollywood Studios. Um, but I, I like to play Wrong Answers Only because you are also funny and creative so you wanted him you were saying that he was in lots of different places so joe actually made me a little ping file he's a graphic designer shameless plug if you need any websites or logos or anything like that you can give us a call um but he made a little cut out of himself so i could actually put him in all of the places that you guys recommended and it was too funny so you got to check that out you can see him in carousel progress on mars at mco orlando international airport it was hilarious it's highlighted i've got to deal with the highlight i'm gonna make the highlights pretty on our on our instagram at some point but um anyway thank you so much for being there shout outs to our amazing correspondents and our friends who keep us in the know marie at kungaloosh marie john at uh, John, the Diz Guy and Diz Guy Mickey, Jamie at Jim.Disney, and Joe, my beautiful husband, who got all of this set up today because I was having a mini emotional breakdown because one of my neighbors is not very nice today. But that's okay. That's okay. We persevere. We bring the magic. The show must go on. And of course, my partner in crime here on Park Hopper Daily, Catherine Manu, for this, as always, banging script and for keeping our website up to the minutes. Uh, but guess what? The time has come for me to answer some of your questions. So if you're watching right now, type it, type it, type it, type it, type it, type, type it out because I want to answer your questions. Let me, I'm going to move the monorail. I'm going to bring this guy over. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Okay, here we go. Hello, Facebook. How's it going? Uh-oh. Why isn't it working? Okay, there it is. Um, awesome. So if anyone has any questions, please type them in. I think I had a question left over from last week, um, which was, what is my least favorite 
attraction at Disney. So in case I haven't talked about this before, I am going to tell you the worst ride that Disney has ever created and um, they really, they need to put some work into retheming it. It is the Tomorrowland Speedway. The Tomorrowland Speedway is terrible and I'm, I feel like I get cancer every time I'm on it because it's just like constant inhalation of crazy fumes and I'm sure I mean, it's open air, it's outside. I'm sure it's actually fine and, and nothing bad would really happen. But um, the Tomorrowland Speedway is, um, it's scary. It's its just, it's so boring. its, it's jer It jerks you around and it's just not fun. Oh, look, we have a question in from one of our viewers from Kasha Klimuk. What is the best thing you have ever eaten at Disney? Oh my goodness, the best thing I've ever eaten. Okay. So I'm going to have two answers because one is like unattainable and I don't think I'll ever eat it again because I don't know when I'll ever feel um, like I can justify $600 on dinner. But Joe and I um, splurged on Victoria and Albert's and it's so funny because I totally thought that he was going to propose to me when we went to dinner there. I mean, uh, so much to the point where I even kind of told him that when I was making the reservation, I was like, they were like, are you celebrating anything? And I was like, well, I, we might be, I mean, we've talked, we've been talking about it a bit and I think that my, my boyfriend might propose. So maybe, and then we go do the whole thing. And I think they were kind of like watching me like, oh no, this poor girl, she's not being proposed to. But then he, he wanted to do it in front of the character. So it was, per it was a perfect proposal, but it was very funny that that was kind of like, part of the part of that trip uh, but the best part of that meal was the steak oh my goodness it was like melts in your mouth just every part of the meal was I mean it Joe how many court was it like seven courses it was mad I lost count I know it was mad <laughs> mad courses it was so so good um I mean, basically anything at Victoria and Albert's is just going to make your entire body just squee with glee. Um, but outside of Victoria and Albert's, my other favorite thing, um, it's kind of weird and we didn't even get it the last time we were there because um, we couldn't just go into the tune and lounge, but um, pre-pandemic, my favorite snack and something that always signified that like, vacation time was on was going to the tune in lounge at 50s prime time and sitting at the bar and ordering onion rings they have the greatest onion rings on the entire planet and they have this like delicious horseradish sauce to dip it in which is my favorite for onion rings and they also make a peanut butter and jelly milkshake but we usually get it chocolate and peanut butter and just like the combination of that like peanut butter chocolate milkshake and the onion rings and joe sitting there and the bartender is always really funny and cool and just that whole experience is just just chef's kiss chef's kiss all right oh my goodness oh okay so i have a follow-up question for that from kasha favorite breakfast food lunch food and dinner food i'm gonna i'm gonna leave onion rings for like kind of a lunch because they're they're pretty they're a good like midday snack if you're not trying to like uh, spend too much money. Um, my favorite breakfast we discovered on our most recent trip, it's actually quick service. So it's not gonna break the bank and it's a great serving size. Joe and I actually split it every morning that we went and it's at uh, the newest resort, the Riviera Resort. And you can Skyliner there if you are at um, Pop Century or Art of Animation or Caribbean Beach or boardwalk or beach club. It's, it's super convenient to get to. They have um, this breakfast platter that comes with scrambled eggs with chives. It was so cool to get like eggs that were clearly like freshly made and, and have some like green in them as well. Um, a cheesy polenta. I didn't even know that I liked polenta until I had this and now I'm obsessed and um, Joe and I have been trying to recreate it at home. And, we've had some success but um it also had uh this great italian sausage it was just like such a delicious little smorgasbord of all kinds of d yummy breakfast foods a little brioche roll super classy i do wish it came with a mickey waffle they don't have mickey waffles on their menu maybe on the kids menu but um the other thing that we got there that w sometimes we would get one of each and split it were the blueberry lemon pancakes 
Okay, now I'm so hungry, I can't even think. Um, and my favorite dinner, I guess I'll leave that with the Victoria and Alberts. Really any steak on property. Um, Le Cellier makes a really great steak too. I'm a steak girl. Give me, give me a steak and I'm just like, that's it, that's it. Um, let's see, we've got another question from Catherine Manu. Um, favorite garden and flower festival item. So I haven't been to Flower and Garden Festival in a couple of years. I'm really like crossing my fingers that I can sneak Joe and I down there at some point before July 5th. We'll see. We did renew our annual passes, so we'd be able to sneak down, hopefully. Um, and I know in, in, when I have been before, I've loved that they do really cool kind of artisan um, flights. So they have like flights of uh, locally sourced hard ciders, which are really good. They have flights of champagne, they have flights of beer. And I remember one year I went with my friend, um, Nicole, and I feel like we just kind of did share, like shared little flights. And it was just, it was just enough of a little drink without being too heavy or like feeling too, too much alcohol, you know, just like a little, just a little, a little flight of fans there. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our questions today, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in live and being part of the conversation. I love you all so much. Mom, I hope you like my lipstick today. I wore it's my Minnie Mouse brand. Um, but my name is Anita Boyer. I'm signing off. Thank you so much for tuning in. And please, if you haven't already, do subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any new news from the most magical place on earth. If you're listening today via podcast, please make sure you give us a little rating and review. And if you like what you hear, share it with friends. Word of mouth is the best way to spread the daily, weekly news. Thanks again, and... Uh, We'll see you real soon. This looks really fuzzy. Is there something on I the? I think there's um surf wax on the oh, screen. Great. It's